Once upon a time, Austria Salzburg was a force to be reckoned with. A proud club with loyal supporters and a legacy steeped in Austrian football. In 2005, everything changed. Red Bull took over the club, stripping it of its identity and rebranding it into the corporate powerhouse that is now Red Bull Salzburg. Borda, and welcome to the first ever Let's Play on the manager seat. Comment down below if you're on board and welcome. We are rebuilding Austria Salzburg. And what a story this club has got. A club that was left in the dust by Red Bull. They didn't even have a stadium. We need to rebuild everything with this club. We've got one simple goal, to get to the top of Austrian football as well as taking over European continental football and getting these back where they deserve to be because their history and the competitions they've won, incredible. With three Bundesligas under their belt, two Admiral two Ligas, as well as a host of cup competitions they've won in the past, Austria Salzburg have got a rich history and a beautiful stadium. The backdrop is stunning, but it's not theirs. It is owned by the local authority. Financially, they're not a rich club. They've got a small stadium, just over 1,500. And this picture kind of paints the story of when everything went wrong. 2005, the takeover from Red Bull, there was a bitter argument between the clubs that literally came down to the color of the socks. They both parted, went their separate ways, and certainly one club came out on top. For us, Sport Veyren, Austria Salzburg, the journey starts to take them back out of their current league, the Admiral 2 Liga. And as you can see, we are 350 to 1 favourites to go down because Liefering and Rapid Vienna are two, the second clubs of Rapid Vienna and FC Liefering are second to Red Bull Salzburg, our rivals. We are odds on favourite to go down. So I have loaded in the Austrian third and fourth division, which doesn't come under the vanilla database of this game just in case we do go down because we may drop down but we'll come back this is going to be a phoenix save and the rules in this league are quite difficult one club is promoted out of a, a pot of some very good teams but three three clubs are going to go down this season and considering we're 350 to one well oh god god help us to help us off the pitch our staffing system isn't brilliant we've already oversubscribed in coaches three out of the two but the other areas the scouting pool which we brought one player in very recently big paul he's good for this level and the physios we're still looking for another one but we have brought in petter who again is decent for this level but in terms of the standard across the league we are very very poor now, our squad is a decent size, to be fair. We haven't got much in the way of an under-21s. We brought in a few players on trial at the moment, but our best sort of players are Manuel Kalman, who is quite good in goals. And then as we come into the defensive region, Matthias, who has already told us that he probably wants to leave at the end of the season, with four teams for head and marking and tackling, we need to keep hold of him if possible. He's a decent player. He lacks a bit of height to six foot, but he is good. But we are lacking a left back, which is why we've got these trialists in at the moment. And I'm hoping that one of them is going to be suitable to sign up. In terms of potential, we're looking at Luca, who at six foot one, 21 years old, isn't necessarily a wonder kid. Dorfmeyer, again, at a 19 years old, isn't necessarily a wonder kid. And Fotschel at 20, once again, isn't necessarily a wonder kid. But they've got potential to help us grow. And I'm hoping they're going to grow into this rather eclectic tactic. I want to create something that is rigid, solid, and is going to give us the best opportunity to turn those difficult draws or close losses into draws and victories. We're keeping things very simple from a team mentality, and the centre of the park is going to be solid. With a lot of pressure, put on our wing backs out wide. Capacha is the guy we've probably going to sign as the best trialist at the moment and we desperately need him so this is the tactic we're going to try it out in the first game now we'll see how it goes we'll zip through the friendlies first of all in the cup game we'll go to rapid vienna in the first proper game these are a big team i'm expecting to get battered but let's see how it goes and our initial first game in Austria didn't start very well. Just outside of two minutes, we were 1-0 down. So easy, just down the right-hand side, loads of space, clear in the middle. And that was it for the first half. It finished 1-0. We hadn't really performed. The team stats, 6.3, 6.4s, 
not good. Kick up the bum, second half, we came out fighting, played some lovely football, 60th minute in, ball goes out wide, excuse the floodlights if you will, and then we get our own little ball in with our star man, Samir Gvozja, making it 1-1. At this stage, I was like, we're going to win the league. Let's praise them, let's go crazy. But, of course, again, excuse the floodlight. Look at this for an easy goal. The ball comes in and he practically walks into the back of the net. Thierry makes it 2-1 in the 91st minute. Bloody hell, football manager. And that is how the game finished. I'm quite pleased with the heat map and how he performed. He's a very good team. They are Rapid Vienna's second club, but ultimately not good enough. And after that very disappointing defeat, it was... Pleasing to see our new sign-in, Christian Capaccio, doing very well, 7.4 rating for that game, but I needed more reinforcements. He isn't brilliant, but he shone like a star in that game, so we went out to pick up some more players. And that began with another bit of squad strength. Uh, wing back on the left in Lucas Thurner, he's very attack-minded, um, but there are some huge, huge gaps in his game. Let's see how he does. For this league, he is poor. And then the final sign-in of the pre-season, the early season, there's a theme here, a centre-back. Defensively, we're not great. And Bojan Lugonja is actually very good. We've only got him on a year contract, but a 6 foot 2 and there's no gaps in his game. These aren't big numbers, but for this level, he's actually decent. And at the back, he's going to come in immediately as a starting player. In terms of the comparison, he is our best centre-back. So coming into the tactic, this is our quick pick, pick without restriction, best 11. And as you can see, they all hate each other. There are weaknesses on this pitch, and I do think it might be the tactical side of things. I need to lose the anchor. I'm thinking three at the back. The wing backs, the creative output that we're giving them isn't really working. And the, these three up top, all on attack, it's a bit disjointed. So we're going back to the drawing board with this tactic, certainly. But let's get into some more games and progress this season. And progress we did. The first game after that disappointing loss was up against Stripfing. And within the first three minutes, the game was put to bed. A wonderful goal by Gvodja. And then this lovely ball through here by Schmitzberger. Chest down, 2-0 with inside three minutes. And that is how the game finished. Statistically, it was a very even game. But possession-wise, we're dominating it. This is my theory. We're not very good. Let's keep the ball and not let them score. And this is the perfect result for us. And we followed that up with a very, very impressive draw against a good team, Austria Lustenhau. We went ahead very early on in a penalty, but they batted us, scoring a goal in the 40th minute, just inside the first half. And that is how it finished. One all, and as you can see, 25 shots to two. We FM'd them. Then we came up against Kaftenberger, and this game came alive in the 68th minute. We tweaked and we changed everything, went behind 1-0 to a lovely head of the back post, and then we equalised through our own set-piece. Dorfmeyer comes back inside with some lovely play, and Sorda scrapes it over the line, 1-1. And then we go behind again, 79th minute, Murdler out on, on Mandler, he's on a murderer, although he did murder us with that cross, 2-1 in the 79th minute, and this is where... A couple of last minute changes, some fresh legs in the pitch. Ball comes over to Sordo, gets his second of the game to equalise in the 80th minute. And then the 92nd minute, we're going all out to win this game. Hausberger to Volker in loads of space and what a finish, which gives us the victory. And well deserved, I say. Equal game, but we had more possession and more chances. After that, the wheels kind of fell off. We went down 3 1 to Admira Vaca. Modlin, I'm please excuse the pronunciation. A good team absolutely battered us, as you can see. Then we went down to FAC Vienne, 3 2. A close game, but they were the better team. And then a third defeat on the bounce to ASK Voigtsburg, 2 0. Once again, we just did not turn up. And you can see the tactic in the bottom. There were some very low ratings in that game. We turned the form around with another late victory against SW Bregenz, 2 1 victors. We were doing okay in the league at this point. A draw against DSV Leobun, 2 2. And then Pua defeats the first Vienna FC and the big dogs in the league, FC Lieferin. If you don't know, these are the feeder to Red Bull Salzburg. It means the league table looks like this, which worries me. We started incredibly well with those victories, as you saw, and we were up in fifth, sixth position, but now we are dropping like a stone. Liefering, Rapid cannot gain promotion, and there are some teams below us that I'm hoping are going to stay there. So whereas the league is struggling, in the cup, we're doing okay. 
After winning the first round against ASK Kottenbrunn, 5-1, a great victory. We came up against one of the biggest teams in Austria, in SK Rapid. Now this is where the tactic just baffles me because there are days it turns up and we can genuinely destroy very good teams. We were 1-0 up within the first 30 minutes. They came back with a great head of the back stick, 1-1. Then we're another set piece goal here and it tends to be the second ball we don't do very well from the actual set piece is the rebound from Gabal's jar makes it 2-1 and then we lose to a set piece with a bit of luck to be fair in the 52nd minute it's 2-2 and then we come forward in the 55th minute Volker to Zotti great ball through to Gvoljka who is probably our star player makes it 3-2 and then the 64th, 61st minute great play out on the left hand side the ball comes in Zotti and acres of space is 4-2 and we didn't luck out in this game. If you look at the stats, we deserve to beat one of the best teams in Austria. Their player stats, they didn't turn up at all. So this tactic, I, I, it baffles me. We do struggle against some bad teams, but then when we play against these big teams, it comes good. So taking a look at the squad, as mentioned, Gavodja is our star player. Seven goals in 13 with the best average rating. Beyond that, there's not many at all. Zotti is doing okay up top. He scored a few goals and he is performing above a seven, which I can't complain with. But the tactic, I need to change it. It's a little bit too stagnant in the middle. I think our success comes from the team instructions. Now, what we've done here is we've set this up with a complete understanding that we're not a very good team. Cautious mentality, in possession, we're keeping things very simple and playing for the set pieces. As you've seen in the games, we have scored some goals from those set pieces. In transition, we're regrouping, we're holding our shape. We are trying to be a rigid unit and slow everything down keep it nice and simple and then of course out the possession the mid block we, we want to keep this as compact as possible to make sure with our fairly narrow in possession formation we're not allowing them opportunities to score through the center of the park so we need to tweak that on top of that i need to sort other dynamics now for this and this is going to be a crux of this video even though we're doing okay we are not expected to do anything apart from bravely avoid relegation but these players still hate me and they're not enjoying their football. If we look at the happiness, this is where we can kind of drill in to try and fix this problem. And as we're looking around, everyone's happy with the training. We're good with that. Treatment, they're not happy because they're supporting a teammate who complained that our form wasn't bad. This is a, is a faux pas of FM, if you ask me. All that shouldn't come off the back of that. One person is dissatisfied with the club, who is the ringleader, Rene. And then this is where the crux of the problem. It's the management. That's what they are unhappy with. So with that, I've kind of got my information to hopefully fix the issue. And we're going to try and fix that on camera. I don't know if this is going to work at all, but we're going to pull a team meeting in the knowledge that they do not like me as a manager. So we're going to try and encourage them and be positive and get them back on side. Now, as a person, I want to challenge them. I want to say to these boys, you need to step up. But my worry is that because they don't like me as a manager, that's probably not going to work. Encourage them is almost a middle ground, and I think that might be our option. But there are some positive ones I'd like to tap into, which is true. And it's this one. We've made an excellent start, which we did in our fight for survival. Don't let one defeat get you down. We're still in a good position, which we're kind of not. We're just outside the relegation zone. Maybe we go for that one or this one. Here we go. Even though we lost our last match, we are playing well. Keep it up. Okay, everybody cross your fingers. Oh, for God's sake. So from that, I'm not sure what you're talking about. We're not moving in the right direction. Ah, oh, God. Okay, I'm going to raise my hands to pacify them. I'm pretty happy with that. Do it. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so we've, we've made it a bit, a lot worse. So I've got one more trick up my sleeve that I'd suggest you all tap into. Go into hierarchy to see who are the main boys. And for us is Zaya and Zotti. Zaya, we can come into him and discuss ambassadorial duties, dressing room atmosphere. It's important to get this lad on site. And as we come to the bottom, this one is perfect. I think it's clear that the atmosphere in the dressing room is rather poor. So I'm interested in whether or not you have any thoughts on how to improve things. Let's try that one. Well, he's clearly a detective. Moral isn't great amongst the squad right now, and that's a factor. And I'll positively agree with him. And that's it. Great help. Thank you, Zaya. Let's go and see your other friend, Zotti. See if he can do something for me. I'm going to put my arm around him this time. 
Maybe we'll go for this one then. Any issues I need to know about? I need to know anything. Oh my god, there's a conspiracy. They're all against me. Well, even if they aren't very happy, the board with a C plus are kind of happy. There is the negative atmosphere surrounding the squad and the supporters are a C plus also. Again, attempt to avoid relegation and that's the same target from the board. So I'm confident they will stay up this season, he says through gritted teeth. But as things stand, we are dropping as mentioned. We've got an interesting set of games coming up here as we drift into the winter break, should we call it. So we're going to shoot forward a few games. We're going to get hopefully a nice little cup run going against Lafnitz. And then as we move into that, we'll cover this period and into the new year with some new players to hopefully push us forward and stay up in Admiral 2 Liga. So if you are excited about the first Let's Play on the manager seat, please let us know. Comment down below if you're along for the journey. And two things I need help with. Number one, tactically, what would you change with that tactic? I like the shape, I just want to tweak it. And secondly, squad morale. I've tried everything and I'm just batting my head against the brick wall. Comments down below, tips, tricks, let me know how you get the best out of your squad. And I'll catch you next Sunday for episode number two of the Austrian Redemption.